So my name is Jean-François Archambault. I'm uh, the founder and uh, executive director of La Table des Chefs, a uh, social uh, business uh, that uh, drives chefs, cooks and confectioners to social involvement. So on uh, feeding uh, people in need uh, through food recovery mainly uh, in, in, uh, in the industry and also food education. When I was young, uh, my mom was a great uh, home uh, cook. Um, I would always like, always find it funny because I say that uh, I, for me coming back from school was not to play with uh, my friends in the, in the street. For sure I would end up there playing hockey and whatever, but I was always curious of what my mom was cooking. So after that, I think it was a journey where my dad was the legal advisor to all the chefs in the province of Quebec. He was the lawyer of the Chefs Association. So growing up, he had a gastronomical club. Uh, and I would ask him to go to the dinners with him uh, without, because I couldn't drink the wine because I was, I was not 18. And I would go for the food and taste the food and experience that. So very early, like 12, 13, would go in you know, gastronomical fine dining restaurants and experience things that regular kids or regular teenagers would not taste. So I developed my palate and my taste buds very, very uh, young. So we had a home garden, very big, you know, that you would not find in your usual suburbs now these days. Uh, actually, it's coming back, I think, but uh, slowly. But, you know, we had a big garden at home. So um, at first my dad had us clean the garden. And when you're, you're, you're taking the, the, the bad stuff out, you know, Sometimes you take a carrot out that's not ready yet and you learn how food grows. And so for me, I started to be interesting in food also uh, on the growing side of things. Growing up like that around food, I think was just magical for me because I could, I could express that passion on a daily basis. So on food waste, I think there's many people to be involved in the scaling of the impact that we think we can have on the longer run. We are feeding uh, over 600,000 people recovering over 300 tons of food annually. Um, and I think that uh, when you look at the potential, we're only at the beginning. You know, I think that if you look at the country, wide opportunities in the hotel industry, uh, that's the main industry where I think that there's potential to grow. Uh, we have to go up to the big chains and send the message down that it's okay to do this. Most of the hotels that we have already part of these chains. So they already have living examples of hotels from their own chain doing it. And the complexity of our industry is that you have the you have the flag, which is Marriott, then you have the management company, you have the ownership. And so there's different levels of decision making that need to go through before they say, okay, yes, let's do this. If we can clear that by setting it up to the chain level, the, the flagship and say Marriott, approves this and really wants this to be developed. By the way, X and So and Fairmont has six and So hotels already doing this. Call your colleagues and set the example and let's do this. That's, that I would say my biggest target is that. Then places where we think that, you know, general public in general would, would not think that there would be food recovery possible. Hospitals, hospital cafeterias, hospital in general, you know, those meals going up, there's huge preparation and the food cannot be repurposed internally, like a restaurant would be able to do it. Your basic hospital that has maybe 600 beds will generate twice the amount of excess food, edible excess food, than your typical convention hotel. So these are the places, areas where we want to take our learnings from Quebec and really drive it across the country. Before we talk on the professional level, uh, culinary art or food education was taken out of the school curriculum almost everywhere across the, across the country. It happened in Quebec in 2004. And so in 2007, they took out fast food from the schools without saying to the kids why. The teenagers, they're open-minded, they're creative. So it's the perfect time, I think, between 12 and 18 to really get them. And you know what? They will apply it because there's at least one or two meals in the week where they can do it by themselves. Either they come back from a soccer practice or from, which is off hours, the regular meal, family meals, they'll have to go in the fridge and set, set up something. So you want them to be skilled on a personal level, not on a professional level. We, we need to recreate this space in the schools and, and bring back food in the schools. Like 
uh, art, like like music, like sports, like the basketball team. So we created the brigades. So the brigades program is now in 150 high schools across the province of Quebec. And the government of Quebec has just given us the grant to double the, the amount of these schools and reach 200 schools, which is one out of two high schools in the province by 2022. They granted us $5 million to scale to that. And so we right now have 3,000 teenagers that register on passion, passion-based, extracurricular school life program called the Brigades. And so now what happens is we see the culinary schools uh, uh, in shortage of registration for the culinary arts program. So you need to make that decision by high school fourth grade if you're gonna go into professional degree in cooking. Imagine you have, the, you have, you have kids that are 3,000 teenagers passionate about food. You have to talk to these kids about the, the professional degree. You have to bring a, a trainer to talk about this when they are passionate and really get them interested so that we can drive back these kids into the culinary art for a professional degree and get back the missing staff that we're looking for everywhere in our industry. So I think what we're doing with the stadiums and the arenas is an opportunity to look at other sectors that are not currently maybe driving uh, as much uh, um, involvement in our program because of the maybe the same factor at, that the hotel had in the, in the first place, which is legal liability and food safety. So we covered that and we've proven that that, that is not a factor anymore, that we've, we're working hand in hand with the government. We're making sure we respect the food sanitation rules and everything that lies with it. And there's no legal liability if you commit to a program like La Table. What we should be looking at for the future is education. When you're involved, when, you're, when you want to have a kid taste something and you're imposing it on them, for sure they will not want to taste it or they'll say, no, I, I'm not interested. If you take them and grow a tomato or a carrot or a cabbage, you take the cabbage out, you clean it with them, they've grown it, they've seen it every week, getting big, bigger and bigger, till, it, till you take it out from the ground. You bring it to the kitchen and then you apply skills and you cook something with it. Chances are, if you take raw cabbage and you make a salad, they will not taste it. But if you make a salad and with them, and you, in, you get them involved in the process, they will taste what they have grown and they will have uh, an open mind on it. So if we tell them the real story from the start and we, we tell them what the real passion is about and, and transfer that passion, I think we'll get more passionate people, less people that are just doing this as a job, but more passionate people doing our work and respecting our industry.